Hi, I'm still Vicki. I'm still from Norfolk. <coughs> the title of this piece is Grammar Nazi, and I'm going to move this up. That's not the full title. <laughs> All right, Grammar Nazi. We're walking hand in hand between the barbed wire of strict syntax, our conjunctive bodies pressed against each other's heaving breath, the stars on our chest marking us, the numbers on our wrists scarring us, approaching the soldier, faltering steps, feet sucked into the mud. His meaty hand slashes between us, hyphenating our interlocked fingers. You and I, we become you and I, individual Clauses separated by a poisonous semicolon of stigma. You and I become parts of speech. You and I become she and she, and this lexicon is verboten. This is no regular Nazi escorting me to my cell, but a grammar Nazi. And pronouns are his favorite weapon of divisive genocide. Gradually, he had invaded my peaceful world. Guarding the avenues through which my vocabulary innocently strolled, he reminded me not to slip in conversation because one word could be seen as a threat to the totalitarian state I pretended to live in harmony with. But then, like a crystal knocked of oppression, my security was shattered like glass. Every thought had to be edited and revised in order to keep myself from being detected by the armies of Gestapo in my mind. Silence! was my bomb shelter. Friends were strangers passing by after curfew, and I could not escape the feeling that light was leaking through my windows boarded up with euphemisms, and I was simply waiting for the artillery to fall. But when the solution was finalized, I willingly boarded the cattle trains that carried me even farther into rhetorical isolation. I did not resist the uniformed bully, wrenching me apart from the incorrect antecedent to the subject of my affection. For years, I sat in that cell alone, ribs peaking like a climax in a tragedy. Her name became a homonym to the sound of my rasping breath because I was too weak to speak, but she was all I wanted to say. I could have stayed there forever. But my identity was a fragment, and I needed to complete the thought that is who I am, because being human is a run-on sentence. You cannot stop it, or tame it, or lock it up. I beat against that barred door, and it opened. As the light pierced my eyes, blinded by ignorant darkness, it illuminated the black lines of a swastika hooked in my skin. And I realized, through this whole sentence, I was my own persecutor.